Okay, hey guys, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Sergey Kabashnyuk. I'm a software developer in DevTools Ukraine, Red Hat. And today we are going to talk about the tools, development tools, the tools you like, the tools you think you are efficient with. And we talk uh, about Eclipse Chair, which is specifically designed for cloud native application and how swapping in, the, in Eclipse Chair help you. Um, so the tools, this is a constant process for a human to search for a better tool. The tool that uh, makes you efficient, the tool which allows you to spend less physical or intellectual resources and to do more things. Let's take an example from the digital cameras. That actually my example, uh, with just a simple switching a tool and the same scene and the same hands, you can receive a more shallow depth of field, a nice blurry background, a nice bokeh, and you get like a wow effect. And the footage like this can start looking like this. And think about it. Uh, in my life, I changed uh, a couple of EDEs. And uh, I'm always looking to, to ED like do more things uh, which I be more productive. So you can imagine uh, different tools that give you more efficient. Uh, but let's talk again about the EDs, the, a bit of history. Uh, one of the first programs, that's not the first, but one of the first programs was looks like that, it's a punch cards. And we can imagine like that was the first ED for that. <laughs> Uh, not sure how it is really efficient, but I think it was productive. But time goes, we see movement and uh, probably have, well, all of you have the different experience that that was my experience uh, with the EDEs. But interesting uh, that in 1995, Computer Watch claims that developer thinks uh, that uh, EDE was not well, re well received by developers because they think the EDE will fence the creativity. Really, in 1995? But what are the trends now? There is a ton of tools, a ton of EDE, which allows us to, to focus on uh, bringing the value to the product, to be more and more efficient, to unleash our complete potential. A new generation of EDE become lightweight. They are simple. They have a powerful tooling, uh, quite easy to customizable. A lot of tooling allows you to customize a lot of things in like a, from the colors, from the menus, from the fonts to the different functionality. And as a developer, we love high release cadence. We love new features. We like to see more, more and more. And good example of the VS Code, in a couple of years, it, it become huge potential, uh, very popular. Uh, in one of the Stack Overflow uh, service, about 35% from 75,000 responses claims they're using VS Code. And they admit that it's easy to download, it's quite small, it has a lightweight, modern, flat UI. It has a lot of extensions. It has a support of the language server protocol, which allows you, if you don't have the language you like, you can easily bring the new language to, to the VS code. And a high release cadence. Also, there is another different light uh, editors like Sublime, Atom. They are, they don't have a huge number of feature, uh, features, but that features they have uh, that allows developer to be really, really productive. The features they have are really nice. And an interesting item uh, recently, not recently maybe, uh, add a language server support so you can edit uh, and new languages there. And one of the biggest trends we see uh, for last years uh, that developers are no longer afraid the browser ID. They start using it, actually. Uh, for him, recently, almost each quarter or month, 
we see a new, new browser release. Some of them made by companies, but some of them uh, made by a group of individuals. Uh, this particular example, Code the Sandbox, um, is specifically designed for web development and more particular for React. It's doing uh, not a lot of things, but uh, that things that it's doing, it's really efficient. It's really nice. Um, one of the trends in Eclipse uh, Foundation, we see new IDE, Eclipse Theater, which is uh, cloud and desktop IDE. Uh, with Electron, you can run it uh, locally in your desktop, and as well as that you can run it in a browser. It supports uh, a language server protocol, so you can plug it in uh, a new uh, language, very easy. And last but not least, uh, it is built in the, on uh, quite modern uh, JavaScript frameworks with TypeScript, uh, CSS, and HTML support, which is kind of nice. And of course, Eclipse Chair, which uh, has a broader set of capability with the goal uh, to allow anyone to contribute without, to the project without installing anything. And uh, one of the points to do that it's accelerate project onboarding. So if you don't need to install anything by yourself, it, it saves your time. It uh, removes inconsistency by, by, but it works on my machine, which kind of happens sometimes, sometimes often, sometimes not. And it protects your source code. It's, it's removed the source from your hard to secure laptops to the infrastructure. And you don't need even uh, to check out your sources to a local host. So it's removed to infrastructure, all of that. And to do that, Eclipse Chair has a slightly different definition of the workspace. So uh, you have an EDE. Currently, we have a GWT one. But we think uh, that TR is a nice tool. So we like to switch to the TR as our default uh, uh, editor. We have a project sources and we'd have a runtimes. And by runtimes, I mean all tooling you need to build, run, test, and debug. And all of that toolings are run in a containers, IDE running in the individual containers, uh, debugger running in individual containers, language servers running in individual containers. What's the benefit of it? So let's take an example of this code. For instance, if you want to have a Java support, you still have to install Java locally. But if, uh, if we provide an old tooling with containers, when you get the language support, uh, like Java support in the chair, you get all dependency. You don't need to think about which one dependency you need to install. Uh, another nice feature, uh, if you want to upgrade the version, for instance, you have Java 8 and you want to support Java 10, and all you need is just to upgrade your containers. You don't need to mess your local environment with different dependencies. For instance, <coughs> in Eclipse Chem, uh, for different components we use, sometimes we use Java, sometimes we use uh, Node, sometimes we use Go. So imagine how many dependencies you need just to build the project. But with this, you don't need to mess your uh, local environment. Also, as part of the Eclipse Chair project, we would like to define a, a format, a format which you can put in a file. We call it a dev file, where you can specify three major parts for your development. The project you are developing, or projects if you have a couple, the tooling like uh, EDE or language servers which you would like to, uh, to run with it, and the commands which you uh, need in your work. So this is a dev file. Later, uh, with the demos, I will be heavily using uh, such thing like as a dev file. Um, as I mentioned, we like container-based, but that's not the only one way to, to have extend uh, functionality of the chair. So as I mentioned, we like TA, and we would like to switch to TA in our next versions. Uh, so we support all the plugability that uh, TA provides. Uh, plugins or extensions. And now Red Hat and other uh, Thea guys working heavily to allow use 
almost every uh, VS Code extension that you can find in the market with the TIA. So it's kind of runtime of that code. Um, but that's not only it. Uh, we think that we don't want to uh, tie you to any specific editors. We think that if you like some tool or like different editors like a dirigible, Eclipse dirigible, or you like scientific tooling provided by Eclipse Jupyter or other editors, you can swap the default editor with the, you, the, the one you like. And we don't want to, you to be connected to any specific of this. And of course, we thought about uh, the delivering uh, plugins and uh, editors. We we're building as part of the Eclipse Chip project uh, a plugin registry with all different social activity like stars, like commands, like anything you expect from the marketplace. Uh, we also thought about the enterprises. So you are, if you want to have it locally to have some proprietary uh, software or proprietary tooling, you are able to, to, to do that, to install it. And of course, uh, administrative uh, tasks like uh, team management, everything you, you would like to expect from the, as administrator. Demo, okay. So, I will try to show you some live demo. We have a backup plan with the video, but I, I hope the internet will be fine. So I, I get the uh, GitHub repository with the different examples. And as I told you about the dev file, I've put the dev file in the root folder. So you can see here, I just put uh, a tooling which I would like to, uh, to use for working with the, this repository. And in, as part of the Eclipse chair, we have a nice feature which is called in factory. All, all example uh, I will show you are running on my local uh, OpenShift, but you can run it on uh, your Kubernetes as well, or our or Red Hat's public uh, chair cloud, chairopenshift.io, you can install it by yourself. So. That's, so the idea is uh, really simple, to have a link. This is a domain there the chair is running. And to have a link for a Git repository where there is a dev file. So everything you need is just to click. And as I mentioned, we would like to increase uh, project onboarding so you don't need to install anything. You need just to click in, on the link. And you can share this link, you can create a button on your project. So to, to start contributing you to the project, you just need to clean the link. We also call it factory. So at this moment, uh, Che as a workspace server uh, gets the definition of tooling, gets the information from the, the tooling, which container it's need to run. It pull it and it started. So now we expect to see a tier editor. We really hope to see. Yes, yeah, so it's starting. So you saw that Thea start cloning. Um, so you saw, you, you saw probably two tools. One tool was a Thea editor, another uh, tool was the uh, exact site car. So this is a, a separate uh, container which allow us to execute commands in a different containers, which is running as part of your workspace, as well as to see uh, a terminal. Like here's a terminal for container which is running here. We can see, take a look at the process running. And yeah, so uh, it clones my project, so we can see it here. and the f all cool feature that regular EDE is providing. So I wouldn't go too much of details about what this particular editor uh, can do. I guess we have another demo about that. Uh, but let's take a look at another different example. What if I, this, I don't like this EDE. That's a good example. Um, 
So another way to use the, the links is to specify a direct link to a dev file. So I have another example, which will run uh, our GW2ED. So I specify the link particular to that the ETD. So as I said, you don't need to install it anything by yourself. Uh, Eclipse share will go to the registry, it takes the definition of the tooling I've asked. In this case, uh, it is, um, it is a GWT-based editor. Yeah, it, it, it also starts cloning your project. It has different instruments like uh, syntax highlighting, all you may expect from the ID. <coughs> Any questions so far? I'm sorry? Yes, so uh, as part of your tooling, you can, you can define uh, a volumes you need. So for instance, you know that your tooling usually say the settings in some particular place, so you can define the volume for that place. So next time when you restart your e EDE, some settings will be saved. Uh, as well, we are mounting the project folder to, it's kind of default location for resources where, where we, we usually put the resor uh, sources, clone. Okay, let's move next. So the, in this example was the uh, regular EDs which we use, the, the current one, the uh, GWT one, and the feature one that uh, we would like to use. Uh, but what, what if, you, if you like uh, Jupyter as an open source web application that allows you to do some uh, equation, visualization, some maths, for instance, if you are a teacher and uh, have a students which do some math and you want them to have, uh, to have a class with the, some, some coding and they don't need to install anything, they just need to click a link and everyone would get uh, their own environment uh, which is running uh, their own instance of Jupyter where they can do some uh, editing of the sources and run it. Let's take, how, take a look how it looks like. So it, this is a Jupyter. Crank created Python. You can do some coding. You can run it. You can, obviously it's not run. I guess you can do some debugging. You can save this file. So all you need is just a link to share this link to the students and they receive the, the complete environment and all that running on the open sheet of a Kubernetes in your infrastructure, which has the scalable environment. Okay, um, next up, uh, another editor, Eclipse Dirigible. which is also kind of uh, integrated development environment with different set of features. As I said again, now Workspace Master gets the information about the tooling, it uh, pulls the containers and it started. Yeah, that's Eclipse Dirigible. So we can create something here. 
create project and do some stuff. Okay, so you get like, examples with the editor, with HTML editors. Uh, what else? So imagine uh, you would like to have some application like uh, Dropbox. So, so we have a HTML web, uh, web file browser and let's see how it may look like. So basically it gets some web interface for folders and the files and with some sort of imagination you can exp to, to think about l that like a Dropbox. At least HTML version of not the application. So you see you can create the folders. You can create, uh, start creating the files. You can start editing it. So pretty much looks like the version of the Dropbox. Okay, so you get the idea. So the if application is a web application, if it's a kind of easy to do, to integrate that. But what if your favorite application is, is not HTML based? So in this case, in this example, uh, I will talk about the Eclipse, the classical Eclipse. So it used the platform UI and SVT framework, uh, SWT framework to, to draw the widgets. And on Linux, uh, you can use a GTK to, to, to show the widgets. And there is a, uh, I guess, a front end for GTK called Broadway, uh, which draw your GTK widgets as HTML. So as part of the container, we run Eclipse, which we will see that later, uh, run Eclipse and a Broadway daemon. So this daemon will draw a GTK widget as HTML. Let's take a look how it may look like. Oops. Yeah, so now Eclipse start drawing. It's still drawing. Um, not everything runs smoothly. I guess that's somewhere around uh, SWT and GTK. Um, it's still drawing. We need, I guess, a couple of seconds more. Yeah, so now that's a classical Eclipse. And you can start coding. So if you're fan of the classical Eclipse, here we go. OK, um, another GTK example. So there is a. Um, scripting, I guess, uh, bridge for GTK. So if you know well GTK and uh, uh, you like scripting, you can write the script and build your GTK application and draw it. So this is Alexander Larson example. So in this case, we uh, We'll download the container. This container runs a JavaScript, which has the connects to the GTK and start uh, compi uh, combine GTK widget to some applications. Let's take a look how it looks like.
again, if you get the more powerful nodes than my desktop, you can get really fast user experience here. Oh, that, that, actually, that's a, a good example. Uh, your client there, you run your browser, uh, doesn't supposed to be very fast. It can be uh, like a quite cheap laptop or tablet, but your infrastructure can actually run in a really powerful cloud hardware, which gives you an ability to run your software uh, easily. So this is a, that uh, GTK application. It can very simple, just a bar with some buttons. It's run actual GTK application, uh, which behaves a little bit better than the regular Eclipse. So uh, this is a GIMP. Yeah, it started. So let's take a look on a, on the script. This is a script. Can you see it? So basically what this script is doing, it, it's an initialize uh, GTK, uh, create a panel, get the all application, add some buttons and add some uh, actions to the buttons. So if you are really familiar with GTK, you can easily combine uh, this widget to your application you would like to run and run it in a browser, run it in, an, in a cloud. Um, okay. Um, Next, so what if you are not a fan of GTK? What if you are not a fan of GTK, but you are still wants to run that application you like? Um, okay, we can do a different move. So the, the idea is to install X VFB, it's a virtual frame buffer or X11 server. Uh, install X11 VNC client to that and with help of no VNC client to X11 VNC, connect from the browser to your application. Uh, again, let's take an example of uh, gedit. I really like gedit. Um, that's why so many examples with gedit. Yes, and that's basically it. Uh, so gedit is running, uh, xvnc uh, working, xvfb is working, translated uh, real application to HTML. Um, but I guess not a lot of you writing your application with the gedit. Let's try more popular application. In this case, it will be IntelliJ. Again, you don't need to install anything to your local laptop. Everything is defined in the dev file which you can sh uh, share a link to all your colleagues or students, and uh, that will be replicated. It, uh, it, since it's used the same container, it's removed the inconsistency, but, work, but it works on my machine. It will be always the same. Okay, we have IntelliJ running. So let me show you some example that is actually running and there is, you can build, run, and debug your application. Okay. 
Oops. Again, imagine that your client, your HTML browser is running some simple hardware, very cheap laptops, but you have the good infrastructure with like eight cores or 10 cores and the flood of RAM and you get the full access to all that power just from the simplest uh, clients. Okay, we have running and we can debug it. Yeah, so now you're debugging. That's basically all the examples I have. Um, I have some slides about the problems. Uh, as you might expect, no every, not everything work, works very smoothly. And uh, so some, some of the problems that I met uh, preparing these examples. So first, authentication and authorization. Uh, it's more related to the HTML uh, editors uh, like Dir Eclipse Dirigible uh, with a, a uh, demo you. Uh, it's quite hard to combine the Eclipse chair authentication authorization and the uh, Oren. Uh, in most cases, uh, I just turn it off. And, um, but as part of the Eclipse chair, it, it has a multi-user mode we uh, we have that mode that we are running a dedicated container, uh, which is like protect everything you are running in your workspace, and it requires to have a token uh, to be passed, so no authorized access to, uh, will be used. Uh, we use that for a Thea-based editor, but that's kind of big topic, and like it would be hard to 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 tell you everything just right now. Uh, next point is that if you are preparing the images to be running uh, in OpenShift, since it's, since, uh, uh, it's not, not allowed by the default you run as a uh, root, think about that the f uh, then you will be building uh, that images. You need some additional actions to correct writes in the home folders and configuration files, so make sure you will be able to run it on the uh, OpenShift. Uh, access to the parent frame. Um, so that's, that was, I met, I guess, again, the f one of the editors. So uh, let's take example one. So basically what is happening here uh, is the left sidebar is the, our major application and ED is running in an iframe and uh, not every tools expect that they be, will be running in an iframe. And since it's a different host, different domains, sometimes uh, you can get the cross-domain request, which is not uh, possible. So that is something you will need to deal with. So ED is running in a uh, separate container. It has a uh, different URL, and the Eclipse J application has another. And it shows you ED in an iframe. So expect you will uh, may have the problem like that. Uh, screen size. So if you are playing with the GTK Broadway uh, front end, or if you are playing with the uh, XVNC and VNC stuff, uh, screen size is not always adjusted as you might expect. Uh, you need to figure out the proper combination of all of that to to write, run it more or less smoothly. Um, we are close. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, you can get the, the communication channels with, on a GitHub. You can uh, send email to the dev list, uh, IRC. I don't recommend IRC. Uh, Nettermost. Where I, this is a place where we are most active in combination with GitHub. Um, and dev list, of course, dev list. So, any questions? Yes. Uh, you 
were showing the, the Jupyter notebook demo. Yes. It's quite common to use Jupyter that if you connect to some external system like Spark cluster or whatever. Is it possible or to which, some, to which extent you can ex uh, extend the fabrication process that it would also create other resources in Kubernetes? Um, I guess that's possible. So uh, usually then you're in at least at, can I, if I can project to OpenShift uh, in that container, you can get the uh, OpenShift token and OC2. So you can you are able to to run uh, OC2 and create all, all OpenShift resources. So I guess the same for Kubernetes. You can get the terminal to the container and run all, all commands you you need. Sorry, I was thinking that you have the, the, the file in those Git repositories. Yes. Have you considered to introduce something like dot I don't chat whatever directory in which there could be some YAML files that would be just instruct for for and it's supported, right? Uh, uh that belong that Yeah. Yeah. So as, as part of the tooling, uh, so let's let's take a look. So this is an example of dev file. You can uh, see a, a tooling with a plugin editor and you have, can have the OpenShift or Kubernetes recipe. So this uh, recipe located in, uh, uh, behind the uh, dev file, so near the dev file, and you can specify in that YAML all OpenShift resources and Kubernetes resources you need. And they will be run as part of your work, workspace tooling. Yes. Could you be in the HTML ones? Because to be honest, I mean, I don't understand. Maybe it may be slow, but why am I think I would just use like Citrix or something where I just remote into a thing and just use an ID. Why do I have to run to a kid to share, which is allegedly an ID, right? Why I understand it wrong? Uh, you, could, you can. If you feel that you are fishing in the Citrix, I guess uh, you can do that. Um, the, the idea. I guess that you can easily. So the question was, can I debug the HTML? I guess yes. So I'm I'm not a front end guy, so I can't answer you particularly. But the what I see, the guys who is working on the uh, tier stacks, they are they are developing a tier extension inside of the tier or in the Sunday chair. And they actually run in, as far as I remember, a separate instance of the tier with the new code, and they are debugging right here in the browser. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.